A vast amount of literature has been published on the geology of Indonesia and models that explain the extremely complex tectonic evolution of the Indonesian archipelago. They have been presented for almost 100 years now despite there being no universal accepted model of its tectonic history. Over the past 40 years, many reconstructions of Indonesia's tectonic history have been mapped where only the broad relative motions of the three major plates are agreed upon. They are the relatively stable Eurasian plate, a westward moving Pacific plate and a northward moving Indo-Australian plate. It is estimated that approximately two new models are suggested each year that explain the formation of the Indonesian archipelago. However, it's the paper published by Hall 2002 that describes tectonic plates and reconstructions covering most of Southeast Asia, dating back to the Eocene, that sets the benchmark for today. Volcanoes represent a great danger for humans. As a common sense, lava flows represent it, sure it is, and destroy homes, roadways, lands, and of course life. However, the most dangerous eruptions are the explosive ones that produce phytoclastic materials which has faster and longer reach, also being hazardous for human environment health. Although all this potential of destruction, volcanoes represent ironically a constructive, dispositive process in Earth's context. Earth's atmosphere, surface water, and also the crust are a result of volcanic gas emissions during the beginning of our planet. Many islands were formed by volcanoes and also in tropical areas weathering covered lava flow into fertile soil. In addition, the gases emitted by volcanoes has directly impact on the atmosphere, hydrosphere and biosphere, being responsible for climate change due to the spread of pyroclast material and ash in the Volcanic eruptions emit gas that can affect climate, mostly of this are sulfur gases, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, ashes, and between 50 and 80% of war vapor. The sulfur gases can lead to acid rain and ashes, depending on the eruption magnitudes, can reach long distance covering the atmosphere, blocking the sun to touch the surface, leads to many impacts on ecosystems and agricultural process, being hazardous for human and environmental health as well. Lava flows is nothing else than melted rock and is responsible for many different rock formations when it's cool. Islands and dikes can be formed by lava flow during constantly eruptions over thousands of years. It exists many types of volcanoes. One of these are shields volcanoes that are normally non-explosive because the fluid lava loses its gases easily. Such volcanoes can be found in other islands. Cinder cones has large bowls, shaped craters, and normally small and made it by pyroclastic material. Stratovolcanoes are made up of pyroclastic layers and lava flow being hewed in mass. It can be called as composite volcano as well, which is a stereotype of volcano due to the size and height that can be saw kilometers away. Lava domes represent the most unstable volcano and commonly collapse. The great pressure made by the gases force upward the felsic magma that is too viscous to Basalt plateaus are formed during constantly fissured eruptions. That process is rare and is responsible for forming huge areas during thousands of years such as the Columbia River in Washington. Volcanoes are formed due to the movement of tectonic plates. Subduction is a process that one place goes under another plate, which causes a huge friction that melts rocks at around 70 km deep, which became less dense than the other rocks around it, leading to a tendency of movement that push this melted rock toward the surface, cause eruption and consequently forming volcanoes along thousands of years. Crater Lake Indonesia is a homeland for many beautiful crater lakes. Normally crater lakes are acidic in nature. Characteristics of crater lakes are known to vary among different lakes. The most important factor that influences these characteristics are the volcanic intensity. 
A good example can be given by Lake Kelimutu, which consists of three lakes. The Sumatran region in western Indonesia contains the greatest amount of crater lakes. And this region is where Lake Toba is situated, which is considered to be the largest crater lake in Indonesia. Lake Toba Lake Toba is a massive lake present in the Sumatra region. It was formed around 74,000 years ago. The volcanic eruption which resulted in the formation of the lake was considered to be 100 times greater than that eruption that was taking place. This figure given shows the result of a massive volcanic eruption which resulted subsequent collapse. Eventually, the caldera was inundated with water which resulted in the formation of the lake as you can see in the second part of the figure. A few years after the formation of Lake Toba, Samosir Island was formed from the upthrust that was created from the magma below. Kelimutu Kelimutu is a large stratovolcano and is widely recognized for its uniqueness as it has three different color lakes as you can see in the figure. It's kind of beautiful. It is located on the Flores Island. It has different spiritual importance for the people living in Indonesia. The peculiar thing about these three lakes is that each lake changes color periodically due to the different chemical composition and temperature between the lakes. The Krakatoa eruption took place on August 26, 1883. It was a powerful explosion with a VEI of 6, resulting in the destruction of the island. While few people were directly killed by pyroclastic flow or hot ash, the seismic waves were produced, resulting in 36,000 deaths in the form of tsunamis throughout Indonesia. Regardless of its damage, the eruption of Krakatoa served as a good example of the volcano's life cycle. As prior to the island's formation, Krakatoa had been three islands, each formed in the caldera of a much older volcano. In the present, this process continues with the growth of Krakatoa in 1927, which can be seen here. As interesting as this is geolo geologically, Krakatoa's destruction also offered a unique opportunity to study primary succession, as Krakatoa's rem remnants were, le were left bereft of life. For these reasons, Krakatoa's eruption is interesting both from a geological and biological standpoint. The Sumatran Raman earthquake was one of the deadliest natural disasters in recorded history. The 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake was an undersea megatrust earthquake that occurred on Sunday, 26 December 2004. Its epicenter was in the west coast of Sumatra, Indonesia. The earthquake reached 9.3 magnitude, killing more than 250,000 people in a single day. It's the most devastating tsunami in modern times. Traveled 600 kilometers in mere 75 minutes. We will present now how the tsunamis are formed. Firstly, the sea level drops momentarily because of the sudden displacement of the sea floor. The water rushes into the depression to correct the sea level. So the sea level starts to oscillate before normalize creating long, low waves, called tsunamis. Here is a satellite image of waterfront area of Aceh province capital city before the tsunami. And now, we can see an image taken after the tsunami, showing destroyed houses and the shoreline nearly wiped out.